Good evening, viewers, and I welcome you all for this uh, HDFC Securities webinar. And today we have uh, esteemed guest, Mr. Navneet Munur from SBI Mutual Fund. And uh, the topic which we are going to cover today is a very unique one, special one. Uh, it is about ESG. So, Navneet sir, uh, you know, since uh, so many customers are asking, uh, we thought of you know bringing you in and conducting this uh, specific webinar. So, sir, uh, we want to know what is ESG, sir. ESG stands for Environment, Social and Governance. So when any investment manager is looking at environmental footprint, social impact and governance factors of an investing company where we are investing over and above the business and financial considerations, then that's the ESG or responsible investing or some people also call it sustainable investing mm. because you are not only looking at financial performance of a company which a typical analyst or a fund manager or an investment manager looks at you're going beyond that and looking at as i mentioned environmental social and governance factors and this is uh, kind of becoming a very big phenomenon globally yes right so because that you know the that's where uh, many of our uh, indian investors as well as uh, you know the uh, in our clients they were asking so how big is this phenomenon and when when sbi uh, mutual, as a mutual fund house amc uh, you know what triggered uh, you to venture into this uh, particular thing so globally is becoming quite big all, there are various numbers but some people think that almost 30 trillion dollars almost one third of the wow. global assets under management are in some manner linked to esg investing uh, they would be following some ESG framework in their investments. And what's happening globally that large number of pension funds, endowment funds, insurance companies, when they are giving money to investment managers or asset management companies like us, they are asking them to follow the ESG framework. So this is the investors who are pushing asset managers like us to follow ESG framework. In India, it's other way around. Several years back, we thought that whether investors may not ask for it currently, but this is very critical for us. So as a large AMC, as a responsible AMC, as part of our value system, as part of our risk management strategy, we also believe this is our fiduciary responsibility. We are trustee of other people's money, and we think that the best way we can serve our customers, and we are also part of a larger society, a larger community. So our best interests are served by maximizing long-term returns on a risk-adjusted basis and not trying to maximize the short-term profitability. Mm -hmm. And for that, it's important that we look beyond financial performance because as I mentioned, even a risk management. So if you don't pay attention to environmental factors or to social factors, uh, social impact, then it can impact the financial performance at some point in time. So several years back, we started more with the G, which was a governance factor. So we started voting in the AGM and EGM of our investing companies before SEBI made it uh, voluntary and then mandatory. Uh, and then of course, now all, almost all AMCs are doing it. And we start a couple of years back, we started looking at the uh, E and S factors also. And we, we, we were the first AMC to adopt the CFA Institute's uh, Asset Manager Code of Conduct, which is signed by more than 1,000 asset managers globally. We were the first mutual fund in India to do that, which is basically uh, committing to a very high standards of ethical and, and professional standards. Uh, recently, sometime back, we signed the United Nations Principles of Responsible Investing. Mm -hmm. BRI is a group of large investors who commit to uh, the ESG framework. They disclose their policies, they disclose their processes, uh, they engage with their investor companies, so on and so forth. And we are part of various other kinds of organizations and initiatives. And in India, particularly because the awareness is very uh, limited, we have been doing variety of things. I just give one example. So we were a member of CII's uh, integrated reporting lab, IR lab. So basically companies give you an annual report where there is mostly financial information, but an integrated report is uh, which is part of the corporate reporting consortium globally and integrated reporting looks at intellectual capital natural capital social capital that a company has in fact as an asset management company we decided to come with our own integrated report what we are asking our companies to do we have done on our own for, for our company also 
and there are various other things like so i mean one of the things that happened a few years back when the coal mines uh, uh, allocations uh, got cancelled by the uh, government uh, because there was a backlash on the on the uh, coal mining uh, allocations and we saw the impact on the metal mining power sector companies and in last few years there have been several instances whether it's the uh, move towards bs6 uh, impacting the automobile industry or recent thing on electric vehicles we see the situation in terms of pollution in india india actually for eight or nine of the most polluted cities in the world are in india i uh, look at the water quality and the, the water levels you look at the number of deaths from pollution in india uh, the inequality which we have in the country lack of you know variety of factors that made us realize that we have to look at all of these factors when we are investing otherwise this will create some risk for the for the company where we are investing and as a long term investor it's very important to pay attention to all of these matters certainly sir so you know uh, i'm sure this was a great value add for uh, you know all the viewers uh, sir uh, you know yes it is a global trend and it it has you know uh, picked up globally in india we see less uh, mutual fund houses or uh, very less awareness so how do you see the future will uh, be you know many of the amcs will pick up and start uh, following this uh, trend i think so so on governance side we have seen how several of the companies or stocks got impacted because of whether excessive leverage or related party transactions or accounting or audit quality various things that have happened in last one or two years and how markets have punished Uh, those companies. Mm. You also look at. I, I talked about the pollution levels in Delhi, and then they move towards this odd even uh, thing mm. in, in Delhi, and that impacts the let's say automobile industry or the move towards BS6 or, or electric vehicles. There are a lot of plants that got closed down near the Bilajur Lake in Karnataka. We know this one copper plant which is closed, which got closed in in in, in Tamil Nadu in Tuthi Koran. I mean, I can. go on and give lot of examples of how companies got impacted because of the environmental social governance factors and how the uh, investors suffered on on those accounts i think over a period of time realization will come that it's very very important for every asset manager i also tell you one more thing as we become larger and larger when i say we meaning institutional investors like as mutual funds as you become larger and larger we won't be able to vote with our feet what is vote with our feet if we don't like a company you just sell the stock and and move out and you buy something else because there is a large universe but as you become larger and larger and you want to own those companies for a long time it's better to engage with them proactively it's better to create awareness about these factors because if something is not sustainable if something is not good for the society something is not good for the environment it cannot be good for the company and it cannot be good for asset managers like us who are growing so 10 years back as an asset management company we were managing around 5 billion dollars we managed around 25000 crores today we are managing almost like 3 and 1/2 lakh crores plus on the mutual fund side almost same on pms will become even larger and i think it's our responsibility and there are so many other asset managers like us it's our responsibility that whatever is good for the society whatever is good for environment is good for the economy whatever is good for the economy is good for corporate sector whatever is good for them is good for us and as an investment community i think we have a responsibility and i think we also have the ability to drive change among the company if, if i'll take one more minute to explain something interesting you know when we talk about let's say the long term returns of mutual funds of last 20 25 years and we say that you know funds have delivered 16 17% now if you break up that return of equity funds i'm talking about you break up that return you find that roughly 14 15% market would have delivered additional maybe 2% per annum or something would have come from what we call in our language alpha mm. this is the beta market return this is the alpha now as institutional investors become large and large that 15% gets delivered of 14 or 13 that also we get impacted by and i think we have an ability to influence the environment in such a manner that overall economic return or overall market return also goes up over a period of time by following the right principles and nudging the companies in the right direction right sir so uh, you know uh, what i gather from you and what you have said is many of the asset management companies they will also follow the suit i think so yes sir
and on the governance side we are already seeing yes. i'm sure the other parameters also people would move towards that right so so the uh, next question is from uh, the customer's point of view right now uh, yes because of the lack of uh, awareness about uh, this particular trend uh, many of our customers also asked when we announced this particular webinar that uh, how how they will be uh, impacted like uh, they they are chasing the returns so what what will change for them so it's interesting actually there are so many studies uh, globally now both in the developed markets in the emerging markets of course in india it's a new phenomena uh, that by following the esg principles the returns actually go up over a long yeah. period not go down and also you 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 optimize on a risk adjusted basis because a lot of risk that can come from from these things can be avoided by following ESG uh, parameters and also by engaging proactively with the companies a lot of mishaps can be avoided and I think that's very very important on the product side so we converted one of our uh, uh, large cap flagship fund Magnum equity fund last year to uh, ESG focused fund uh, it's been around uh, one and a half more than it's almost like uh, we'll be completing two years and then two months time so far the results have been encouraging but we follow an index uh, NSE 100 ESG index and when you compare the performance of NSE 100 ESG index versus the NSE uh, 100 index nifty 100 index versus nifty ESG 100 index the nifty 100 ESG index has actually outperformed across all time periods last time when you look at so many calendar years i think data goes back to 2011 or so so you have a data of eight years uh, backdated and i think it has it has done well and i think it's more i'll, I'll repeat that point that a lot of risk can be avoided by following these principles uh, by any asset manager certainly sir so uh, you know within the asset management company what are principles and what are strategies which you follow uh, yeah. while while uh, you know take, uh, using the ESG principle I mean we, we, we had one product uh, almost three and a half years back on our PMS platform we called it SPI growth is values mm. it's like you grow your money but you don't compromise on your values so this is an ESG plus what is called SRI socially responsible investing there are a lot of sectors that get avoided because if you feel that the, the impact on the society is negative from those sectors and those companies, then we are very, very strict about it. Uh, talking about the Magnum ESG fund, the way it works is, so we have, let's say, uh, as a house, uh, around 350 odd companies which are in our active uh, investment universe where our analysts are continuously tracking the company. We have financial models on them. Uh, the, the analysts are continuously tracking those companies. So that becomes a universe. Then we have an exclusion of certain sectors. So anything related to tobacco, alcohol, uh, adult entertainment, uh, some of those uh, controversial weapons, etc., they get uh, uh, excluded. Then some of the companies score high on what we call controversial uh, controversy score. Mm -hmm. They may be in a business, they may have certain practices which have negative impact on the society or environment. So they, they get uh, excluded. Then we take uh, services from a lot of uh, external service providers and we also have our own research team which look at more than 40 parameters pertaining to E, S and G. So on E examples like what's the uh, carbon emission, the air emission, the waste management, water usage of the company, what the company is doing on renewable energy side, is there a, uh, anything that they are doing which leads to a biodiversity loss so on and so forth on social side the relationship with the local community, with the uh, government, with workers, what they are doing on diversity, uh, what they are doing with the uh, NGOs and then the local community, so on and so forth. And on governance side, the quality and the composition of the board related party transaction, the quality of, of accounting and then the disclosures, the auditor rotation, I mean, several of those governance related factors. And then analysts give a certain score. If the score is below a certain threshold, then the company would come into this fund. And then, of course, after all of this, then the universe is slightly different for this fund. And then you apply your normal uh, looking at a good business, good management, valuation, and the other parameters, which are very similar to any other equity fund. And that's how the portfolio gets created for this particular uh, fund. Right. So, so the so these, uh, these 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 particular parameters which you follow 
is is there any governing body which decides on this parameter or you, these are all your internal parameters so all, all of this has been evolving over the last 6 7 years we have been working on it um, there's a lot of global research which is available i told you about several of the global organizations or the domestic organizations we are we are part of we use external agencies we use some of the proxy advisors in india we use some of the uh, global uh, service providers who are expert on esg and also i think over a period of time you have to ensure that this is in line with the uh, indian needs indian requirements indian uh, environment and so it's it's been a it's been a work in process over a, a long period of time right sir. so now we have started getting uh, you know specific queries from our uh, viewers so the one of the viewer is asking any specific sector uh, have adopted it or uh, followed it uh, more in india something like this esg standard uh, when we look at uh, i think the adoption by several of the sectors we find that uh, there are companies across all sectors uh, which have been working hard on improving uh their score on the on the esg front they are doing a lot in terms of doing the right thing also providing right kind of disclosures to the uh, to the investors like us also one of the important aspect about our, our esg uh, framework is the active engagement with the company it is not only about excluding certain companies if your score is low it is not only about voting at your agm or egm but engaging before the agm agm uh, engaging throughout the year we write letters to the management we write letters to the board we meet them we constructively engage with them i give an example we are part of uh, uh, an initiative called climate action 100 plus which is um, by uh, a global initiative of several investors like us we are the, probably the only investor in india where they have identified 160 companies which contribute the most to the carbon emissions globally and there are four companies in india for two of those companies we have joined as co-lead investors we are engaging with these companies that how we highlight these issues to them that over a period of time you have to bring down your carbon emission you have to put right new processes in place you have to change your disclosure standards there is something called tcfp a task force on on climate uh, uh, related climate risk financial disclosure why don't you adopt that and various other things so engagement is very critical and across sectors there could be some or the other issues and by the way every sector will have its own unique issues let's say in a in a consumer company the packaging material your supply chain if they are using child labor it could be related to the plastic usage as i mentioned about packaging material in a chemical company it will be a very very different kind of issue in an oil or gas company or an energy company I mean, emission would be a very, very big issue in a, a power company, water, or some of the other things will be uh, very different. In a financial services company, where your investments are happening and are you looking at some of these risks, that would be critical. Governance is something which is standard across across all all sectors, but E and S related matters could be different uh, across sectors. Thank you, sir. So uh, one of the query is, as a customer, as an investor. how does one understand the esg score of a particular scheme or a particular company is there any mechanism towards this? so over a period of time our idea is that as the disclosures improve by the companies and regulators for example i mean i talked i i told you earlier about the g aspect governance mm-hmm. that we started voting and then cb made it compulsory for all mutual funds to vote but even then some of the amcs were not voting then they made it compulsory you have to disclose it on your website how you have voted on on all the companies that you uh, own i'm sure over a period of time whether it's related to carbon emissions whether it's related to some of the other parameters there would be better disclosure which will help us in disclosing those numbers or 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 those facts or those figures for our portfolios also and globally i mean there is already a move towards that we are also trying our best we put a uh, couple of these things that i have been talking about on our website and then trying to create more and more awareness there is something called nvg ses see national voluntary guidelines on uh, social uh, environment and and uh, economic performance of every company top 500 companies have to give that uh, report every year it has lot of data so that's the primary data and then we try to get some of the secondary data as well that is available in public if you want to see for any company certainly so uh, do you see uh, you know the way we have value research rating 
or uh, so likewise psg rating also i'm know. sure yeah so as of now there are service providers who give us and then we have as i said we have a template of more than 40 parameters which is internal which is not disclosed in public but i'm sure there would be uh, more disclosures going forward there would be more data disclosures made compulsory by the regulators also right. whether it's a banking regulator for banks whether it's the uh, market regulator for corporates and asset managers, insurance regulator for insurance companies, etc. Certainly. Thank you, sir. So, uh, one of the uh, in, uh, client wants to know what are options available for an Indian investor uh, in Indian market? So, can you... So, as of now, as I said that we have one product on PMS, we have one product on the, on the mutual fund side, uh, which is uh, mm -hmm. ESG focused, but I'm sure over a period of time, there would be more number of products in our in our industry and more importantly i think it's, it's it's as a house what you're doing on this are you sensitive to these matters or are you only sensitive to uh, short term performance which which is the uh, financial performance or are you looking at more longer term i think that's more critical the idea of today's call was not to talk about our product mm -hmm. time and on esg focus but the idea is that to sensitize people that why this is so important for us and as our industry becomes larger and larger we have a stake in the economy we have a stake in the society and i think if economy and society uh, flourishes and prospers and do well if environment is protected then i think everybody will benefit from it i mean as an investor how will you make money if we have a severe problem on pollution and several businesses have to close down or if government has to put a carbon tax tomorrow on let's say an airline or, or any of the industries if government has to put a water tax because water becomes shortage at some point in time so businesses have to become aware at an early stage and you also start putting those things in your uh, framework for investing certainly sir uh, so again i believe uh, you know the question which you have already covered and answered in the you know detail so is there any criteria like esg uh, scorecard which you have already covered the way uh, philosophy which you follow so we will skip this uh, one uh, client wants to know why the awareness is very low uh, on esg front so yes of course we are doing the <laughs> webinar but uh, you know sir uh, any anything specific which you suggest we, uh, as a distributor we also should do so, so first of all i mean compliment sdfc securities for doing this and then uh, using this platform for for initiating this dialogue i'm sure there could be many more conversations like this uh, we also uh, publish uh, some material on, on on our website and in some of the other places it has got published uh, we wrote an article on uh, enterprising investor dot, uh, on, on the uh, cf institute's global website on india's esg challenge we wrote an article in mint about why large fund offices uh, should start adopting ESG framework and various other material which is uh, available now and would be very happy to to engage more on Certainly. that front because as I, I'm, I'm repeating again that advocacy is very critical component of our ESG framework advocacy is sensitizing investors sensitizing general public engaging with the corporate world engaging with the policy makers engaging with media engaging with all participants business chambers and all participants then why ESG is, is critical for a sustainable for equitable growth in the long run so uh, one one of the question is uh, you know uh, any companies are under ESG criteria and what be uh, of this company uh, so any any comment upon that so it's an interesting question and I'll, I'll answer it in a different way that in fact in last two or three years you can clearly see uh, that companies which have been perceived very good on the governance front particularly and of course i mean these are called the quality companies where of course financial performance will also be good and and, and maybe more predictable but if the governance is perceived to be good investors are willing to pay a higher pe or a higher premium whatever i mean it could be a price to book for a financials or any other parameter clearly we are saying that investors are paying a premium for governance as of now uh, while I mean, as I mentioned in our fund last one and a half year, suggests that even on the ENS, the companies that scored high have done better. We looked at granular level, in fact, at sector by sector, and we found that in every sector, we looked at cement, we looked at financials, and some of the other sectors that within the same sector, a company having a better ESG score has performed better. Mm -hmm. 
than the other companies and market is willing to pay that uh, premium and as the awareness increases among more investors and you have more and more these kind of events the news flow that's coming on pollution levels in india or water levels in india you have floods in one part and then you have severe droughts in other part soil degradation and then globally look at i mean venice was kind of in flood which yeah. they have never seen you have bushfires in australia you have much i mean huge fires in amazon in california i mean the antarctica ice is melting the uh, polar caps are melting the ocean levels are rising in fact a recent study i was reading that even mumbai and chennai are at certain risk yes. over a long period of time now one can say who has seen 30 50 years and all but markets are forward looking you don't know in few years time market will start rising in in these risks certainly sir certainly so uh, you know uh, uh, I believe we don't have more questions. So uh, before we, uh, you know, uh, say goodbye to our uh, viewers, uh, any uh, any guidance uh, on how investors should, uh, you know, many of the investors, even you know, so many in our organization, they were not aware, they have never invested in such funds and uh, such instruments. So any advice from your end, how to go ahead? I I think it is all about becoming aware about the risk that can come from the ES and the NG factors. It's about uh, ensuring that wherever you are investing, whether in a fund or you are buying a stock in your own portfolio or you are buying any portfolio, I think pay attention to these factors. That's very, very critical because uh, we are clearly seeing in last few years and I think this uh, the, the, the theme is only going to gather momentum going forward and it's very important that while investing uh, either through a fund or on your own you start paying attention to these i have a very strong view that companies will move from a single bottom line which is profit to a triple bottom line which is planet people and profits you have to pay attention to what my business what my company is going to the planet what I'm doing to the people of the world, what I'm doing to, and then of course the profit. So uh, a triple P focus will be more fruitful, will be more good for the investors also. And, and in fact, in our, uh, you know, I'll always mention this internally that whatever is good for society is good for investors. If something is not good for society, it cannot be good for investors uh, in, in the long run. Certain, sir. That was actually a very grand thought, uh, you know, uh, and I, I sincerely thank you for uh, you know giving this input and uh, you know shaping the thought process of our investors and of course us, uh, sir. We have received one query: uh, What would be the extent of ESG best investment in India? So uh, any number which you want to share? So as of now, I mean, if you think about it as a house, I mean, we are one of the larger uh, largest AMC in India. We have this framework. I'm sure over a period of time we'll have many more. You know, I want to count that as in what's the size which is yes. which is following the ESG uh, framework. Purely from a fund perspective, as I said, that as of now you have one ESG focus fund that we have. You have something on PMS. I'm sure there could be a few products here and there in the in India. But when you compare that with the total size of the mutual fund industry or the total size of the of the overall uh, financial markets, then it's not very high today. But we are we are moving in the in the right direction. I'm sure it will it will only gather steam going forward. Certainly, sir. So, uh, sir, uh, thank you so much for uh, sir, this such a wonderful and delightful uh, interaction with our investors. And I'm sure uh, that was a, there was a huge value add uh, about ESG, the philosophy, what 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 parameters you look at, the size of the industry, what is happening in the world, and how it is uh, you know what what kind of uh, you know parameters which are affecting the industry the growth the returns and uh, thank you once again for yes, giving us your time thank you thank you so thank much you. thank you